Gas us up, Aiden. Gas us up, baby. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Woo-hoo! another episode, another smashing episode bom, of the bom. 50 Percent Doctor Who podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Aiden. Uh, that's me, a silly boy. I'm joined once again by the big man himself, my co-host Connor Hannum. Hey, what's up? Hey. And for his fifth ever appearance, wow, five. the smart guy, the guy that corrects us on all the Doctor Who things that we think we know but we are actually wrong about. <laughs> <laughs> the man himself, he's turning 21 very, very soon. Wow. Xavier Jensen. Woo! Hey, everyone. Woo! I'm here. It I'm is I. Is it, yes. Is it yes. A or an A? I can't remember. Jensen. It's an A. Jensen. But you're yeah. turning 21. I, I, I thought you turned I'm, 22. I'm sorry I'm not from the future. I thought yeah. you turned 22. And my first name isn't George. But people always get right. it wrong. It's, it's Dutch. I don't know what... Like, it makes no sense in terms of... Well, it does make sense in terms of my, in terms of my heritage. But I self-identify as... Italo Australian and my dad's from Singapore and that kind of makes so it's a Dutch East we believe it's from the Dutch East India Trading Company Jansen's a very common last name in Singapore this is the most Xavier so. start to an episode that I, I could think just a, <laughs> well you asked just so a, I answered a, I love it uh, we're here we're talking about a mid-season finale today the first mid-season finale our first one sure. yeah Mm. That's crazy. I'm happy I'm on because this was contentious for a very long time oh yeah here it's we a go. good man goes to war baby I I, I was con- I I did say like no guest stars for finals, but then I got my fucking balls busted. And it's not <laughs> it's not anyone's. It wasn't anyone. It wasn't like I didn't want Xavier on. Like I know Dan said he'd be interested, but I told him that like we're not gonna have uh, guests on. But then Aiden busted my balls. Was like it's a mid season finals. It's not really a final. I was like yeah, all right, you got me. I guess. <laughs> I guess. So I win basically. <laughs> mm. Pretty much. How good's that? We all know. We all know. Aiden's the dad in the relationship between you two. Oh, I Lord. wear the pants. <laughs> I got. I got this. Um, I don't want to upset this person, but I got this link this week, and they messaged me saying it took me two hours to do this. And I didn't open the link because I was too scared. But Aiden, I think. I think someone might have sent through something explicit of you and us because you keep telling people to draw shit, and like on the link, it's, it dead set said 50, 50 doctor on it. I didn't open it though. I haven't replied to him. Because I was a bit scared. So if you're watching, just DM me on Instagram and just say this is what it is. Or just send me a screenshot of it. But I full on got a link saying, open this. It took me two hours to like draw or something. And I was like, I don't want Oh wanna... my God. Yeah, I, d- I didn't look at it though. I didn't look at it. With peace and love. That's egregious. I, I hope... feel bad for whoever this individual is. I was really, it generally was like quite upset. And I was like, what is this? And I didn't, I didn't, I did not, I did not open the link. So... If you are listening to this, <laughs> oh, my soul. just tell me what it is and DM me or just send a screenshot of it because I'm sorry. Don't send me links on DMs because I'm not going to open them. All right? <laughs> Any links are going to be tossed. Just saying. Connor's, Connor's scared of the internet. He's like an old man that is very scared of it. You always have been, haven't you? Yeah, well, I, you know, I've got anxiety, man. Like, it's scary. The shit's scary well, out uh, there. <laughs> You can always this, this, send this brings a whole Twitter. new dimension to Aiden wearing the pants. Yes, the yes, Aiden's <laughs> calmed me down, and I'm freaking out, and he always calms me down. Well, if my uh, my my fingers are crossed that perhaps in the image in the image that's been sent to Connor, I'm not wearing pants. In Maybe the that's my that's my hope. Uh, uh, do you know what oh we're Lord. talking about here, Zave? I hate this meme. No, I, really I, do. I have no idea, and I'm I'm terrified. I hate it. I, well. Look, we all love some fan art, and I've requested a few times that someone makes a bit of fan art of me pegging Connor over the TARDIS console. So that's. I'm, I'm hoping that what? this could be. I never this is. had any say in this. Aiden made a joke once, was like, thank God that's over, and he kept bringing it up to the extent where even someone this week, Ryan, a review I saw, brought it up. I'm like, so people I, actually know I, this joke so- now. You keep freaking me out, and my audio keeps clipping. I think That's so. Fine. Just I'm gonna I'm gonna be a bit more chill. Uh, we love from now on. We love clipping. Jeez. Well, that's crazy. Uh, Doctor Who's a thing. Uh, have, yes. Have, uh, well, Dave, that's why it's fifty percent. Do you have any any before we get into the into the real substance? I, I know we don't have the massive amount of time for for this episode, but anything Doctor Who Sorry. new to you? Anything you want to talk about? Who related? Uh. Well, I, I, I really wanted to be here for the season opener, but, but of course you have this unspoken spoken rule that for people can't do that. But I really <laughs> okay. want to have a long, long <laughs> conversation spite. about the amazing individual that is Mark Shepard. Oh, he of course. plays. Yeah, uh, he plays. Uh, oh, 
Oh, what's his name? Canton. I've forgotten his character name now. Canton. 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 You played Canton Elle- at the beginning Elle- of the episode. Yep. He's 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 now made a name for himself playing Americans. He's a British actor. He's wow, just, I, I love him. I love him so really? much. That's a good yeah. accent. He's 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 a very well known figure in the science fiction fantasy community because you know he was he was in the original uh, Star Trek Voyager. He played Echep's dad, bit of an asshole, mm. um, and Supernatural. that's that's very obscure to Star Trek Voyager character. Don't mind me. Uh, he's he was also obviously Crowley, King of Hell in Supernatural, mm-hmm. and he was in Warehouse Thirteen. He's he's been in a lot of things. He's in Doom Patrol most recently. Oh, cool! Very very well done there. So, yeah, I love him. He's a great actor, and uh, I cannot sing the, his praises more. And the fact that he's in this episode being, like, the the, the like the long line of most British actors have to be in either Doctor Who or uh, Harry Potter, and that's, mm-hmm. he's in Doctor Who, so... Not to change the, the subject that you so politely asked to, to start, but we've been on this call for, like, five, ten minutes, and I've only just realised, Connor, your bedroom... Yeah, it's a completely different setup. What's going on there? Uh, well, I'm not single anymore, so I'm scared about getting into a um, like. Oh, yeah. co- Wait, when did this happen? Ah, oh, I I've been seeing her for a while, but we made it official on the fourth of July. Happy Independence Day, everybody! Oh, that's that's adorable. <laughs> I know, right? I love that day. Um, now nah, I'm I'm really scared of uh, becoming too safe and like getting too comfortable because i've seen a lot of people do that that's not pointing fingers by the way. i'm not saying that's anyone but like i've seen people get too comfortable and that kind of terrifies me a little bit because i always like to try and improve myself so i've been meaning to do my room up for a while so i've been i've been doing up a little bit but you know she's so kind she'll never say anything like that about like changing it up but i was like fuck it it's about time so um yeah that, that kind of explains all that shit Where's your bed? Oh, wait, it's, it's behind you still. My bed's behind me, yeah. Yeah, that, right. that's not going to change. Big, it's going to stay there, but... Is, the big chair that you're on, I thought that was against no. the wall. So that's why I, I was very confused there. I've been using okay, wait, this for on. filming, Weird. this chair. So um, I know people can't see it's it. A it's a nice chair. I've got a, chair. I've got a nice... I've got a nice chair. Uh, hold on, this is my big red chair that I got for my birthday a while back. I like this it. I love it. It's great. The fact but that there's also a, a lightsaber. Chair. This is for my birthday. A good, ah, um, a good comfy chair. Just yeah. sit down and watch TV. Who's listening to this podcast has no idea what our chairs look like. It's a big blue <laughs> comfy uh, chair, and it's literally right you know in front of my do? TV. I use it so. for reading. It's my reading chair. Oh, you know, what I wish I did more so productive like that and read. I'm just watching fucking Sopranos. Sat down. Books behind me. Um. I, I do have a question. Yes. Uh, is that a very specific question for Connor? Is that a Scarlet interface on the t- table there? Where? Here? Yeah. That's my vinyl player. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. It looked, from my perspective, because you have a Blue Yeti, it could have been either a USB or Scarlet. So nah, I, I'm, I'm very much into my vinyls. I went to actually, I just got back from Mark River and there used to be a lovely vinyl shop down there and it closed down. So. No way. I know. I know. I got some that's great vinyls from there. I found some shit in there I couldn't find anywhere. So I think COVID just kind of got to it. It's been a few shops down there that's closed, which is really sad. There's I think the, they're still online, the main, I think, but I don't know. Mm. The main comic book store in Perth is also closed down, Perth in the CBD. Is really? that quality? Real quality shame. Comics. comics? Yeah. No Damn, way. where am I down? supposed to get my Doctor Who Titan com- comics that I've never bought? Hey, apparently from. they're good. Dylan keeps yapping on about how good they are. I did the get a Jody couple ones. of them, actually. Apparently the never Jody ones there. are really good. Oh. Of course, when Chibber doesn't arrive, the Jody ones again. Jody, Jody's, <laughs> Jody's apparently really good, a really, really, really good doctor in every other media that isn't the TV yeah, show. Yeah, no shit. That's literally why I hit everywhere. <laughs> if I wasn't fucking lazy, I would literally do it and read it. But like, yeah, sorry. And this is plain well, in my face. Speaking of other do mediums of Doctor Who, it's time for an early finishing big. <laughs> oh. What? 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 It's me talking about Big Finish. It's my favorite segment because I just get to talk and no first. one oh, it's right here. No, no one knows anything else about it. So I just get to just sit here and talk about Big Finish on my own for a second. No, all I wanted to say was Dalek Universe uh, Volume 2 is out. If you do anything on Twitter, uh, if you follow anything Doctor Who on Twitter, you'd, you would have heard of freaking Dalek Universe because uh, the first volume came out like three or four months ago. It was like so acclaimed. Everyone loved it. I got straight on it. Didn't Crazy like stuff. It? Awesome. I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Uh, volume 2 came out about a week ago. 
about a week ago about and a week ago. i've listened to the first two of the three episodes and oh my god first episode yeah it was pretty good second episode geez louise that's some top tier dog full of twists turns david is impeccable you actually get like emotional david in it which which is just awesome to hear more emotional david yeah um and and the companions because they're like new companions they really feel like new companions now like they they're just fully like on board and it just feels like just this small adventure that did happen during the specials it, it's it's awesome. an awesome time and everyone should listen to it i love how i said in the specials that's awesome it's a great time to put stuff mm. uh it, it, uh, I've been meaning to start Big Finish and I was only ever going to start with David because favorite doctor, you know. Yeah. So uh do it. I would say um Dalek Universe. Like uh, he's got he's got vo- uh, box sets that Well, uh, there's but there's got- all the free stuff that's on on Spotify. So I've started listening to the 8th uh, Doctor serial yeah, um cool. that's on that. But I'm it takes me a while because of various reasons life gets in the way, but yeah, yeah. yeah it, McGann's voice is just Mm. Oh, mate, it's erotic. It's, uh, <laughs> it, the, the next thing... Uh, after Wait, we do, you get want to, the... do you want to repeat what you said at, at uh, Claudia's birthday party about... Um, about uh, oh, I know Claudia. Oh, uh, no. I think, um, um, yeah, me and Xavier are at a wine tour. Uh, oh, yeah, I saw the pictures we were... from you. I saw Xavier, you were looking fly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I try. Oh, I try really hard. I've, yeah. Zave was um, talking to. He found a, a Doctor Who fan in the midst of this wine talk. Yeah. And Zave was talking to him. Um, and then I was like all the way down the end of the table. And every now and then I, I'd like walk past and I'd like join in the conversation, stand there for like 20 seconds. And I walk back to sort of the group that I was sat with. Yeah. Um, and then I think. I don't remember specifically what was said. I think you guys are talking about your favorite Doctor or something. Um, and then. Just it was. At- it was. I was David. The guy I was speaking to was Matt. Yeah. And we were both. We were both sh- sh- bitching on you because you're Peter. Yes. So. Yeah. So we turn to you and we go. We don't like Peter. Wow. And you. You stand up and exclaim to the entire world. Uh, uh, the specific wording escapes me, but I think it was like Peter Capaldi can suck my dick or something. <laughs> <laughs> just across. Yeah. The, I think no, the entire I, it, fucking it was, wine tour was... heard it. The entire pub heard it. It just. It was great. <laughs> no. It. The exact wording, if I remember correctly, was "I'm I'm a happily uh, I'm a ha- I'm a man in a happy relationship." But that 56 year old man or 67 how, how how old is Peter? I think you're about right. 56, 57. 56 year old man can suck me off any day. Is exactly <laughs> what you said. <laughs> Just get me a few beers well. and talking about Doctor Who. That's what happens. It happens. It happens. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 percent. Pop, 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 ca, ca, ca. Uh, today, like I said, a good man goes to war, baby. Which, if you were wondering, is the seventh episode of the sixth th- series of the British science fiction television series Doctor Who and was first broadcast on BBC One on the 4th of June 2011. It served as a mid series finale. The episode was written by Stephen Moffat and directed by Peter Hall. <laughs> Peter Hall. Hey. The episode follows the cliffhanger of the Almost People, which reveals Amy Pond, Karen Gillan, and the operate uh, had been operating a flesh duplicate of herself and is in fact held in a remote location and about to give birth birth <gasps> alien time travel the doctor matt smith and amy's husband rory arthur darville muster an army of allies and set out to find both amy and her child a girl named melody pond <gasps> wow 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 cool can i can i just interject before i have notes yes but before we go through the play-by-play and we talk about everything, mm-hmm. there's a specific scene where Vastra and uh, notes notes Jenny Vastra and Jenny yep. are talking to each other, and Vastra makes earlier in the episode Vastra had made a, a comment about how she can't tell mammals apart, yeah, and Jenny takes offence because they're in a relationship, and um, and there's a scene where. Vastra tells Jenny, I don't know why you keep me around. And then one of the guards reaches for something and she, Vastra extends her tongue, like yonks away and knocks this guy out and turns to Jenny. And Jenny's just there like giving her romance eyes. And I'm like, yes, children's show. (laughs) You know what? I didn't even notice. I didn't even notice she gave her the eyes. Interesting. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a very knowing kind of like well, there's a lot of sex well, that's this episode. Hypersexualization of lesbians, not a really good thing. Interesting. <laughs> to sum up, to sum up uh, our feelings, bef- like in one word, before we start the review, what was your 
In, in one word, what was your feelings when you originally watched this episode? Interesting. It, does it have to be a word? Could it be a noise? Sure. So the exact noise, I think, is... Huh. Yeah, I'm yeah. kind of with you there. I think when I first watched it, mine would have been... Wa wa wee wa. I think that's my first one. <laughs> Bit of yeah. Borat. Yeah, I, I'm kind of with Zay, but I would probably make the same kind of noise. We'll just be like, ah. Yeah. It, ah. it, it, it seemed, smile. yeah. It doesn't seem very, and I'm sure we'll get to it, but it didn't really seem very, uh, I don't know. I might be wrong, but I really doubt he had that idea planned out. It kind of just felt like he had to do something, and this was what kind of worked in his head. But it's kind of I cool feel like it was planned. It. Do you think it was? I think it was. I I really loved this episode as a kid. I was like, fucking after it's after a good, it's a good fighting, yeah. It this this was one of the first episodes in a while where as a kid I was like, fucking yeah, Doctor Who, baby. It's mm. like the yeah, soul it's a good, nerve. Except it's really it's a good fucking child. Nerve. It's a good child episode. But it's like mm. it's like the it's like the like Infinity War, but for all the characters you meet after the episode, it's yeah. hilarious. Yeah. I was gonna say it like it, it seriously is Infinity War. I was gonna say that because you know the, the heroes lose at the end. It's very much yeah. Infinity War. Yeah. Connor, I, do you want to start off the tale? Yeah, I'll just say quickly, I hadn't watched this episode in a while. I did rewatch it, obviously, like I always do. Um, and I, don't know, I was with Dan at the time. Dan actually got a bit teary-eyed. I I saw. I like, you know, I, I like this episode. I've never loved it as much as people have. I remember mm. rewatching it as a kid and being like, okay, this is really cool. But I never really, you know vibe of it massively so that's just gonna be my last thought but um yeah i i get that i feel like all the skullduggery with the soldiers which we'll get into was all like pointless it's kind of weird that yeah Mm. Mm. i was i was very surprised of how i felt with this episode uh that's that's all i'll say a bit of a spoiler easy all right no worries we start demons run amy's giving this massive speech to her baby uh, melody we think she's talking about the doctor which I like. It's it's set up really well, and I even like how Rory's got the Sonic, so you instantly do think it's him. Um, I didn't mm. recognize it this time, but I'm pretty sure you can see a shot of him running in the background. You can kind of see he's wearing the Sanctuarian armor, so it kind of does spoil it a little bit. I'm sure. I mm. think you see a bit of clothing before, which kind of gives it away. But she's giving this awesome speech about who's going to come and um, save them, and it's cool because they're like they've waited thousands of years, like they've been alive for years, which does make sense with the whole uh you know saint Chirion thing and then um yeah it's it's big old rory he's on a cyberman ship which i Woo! don't think from record we've actually seen before it's like a cool a cyberman who. legion yeah it's really cool it's like a cyber legion they i like how rory's like you monitor all of this part of the solar system which i thought was really mm. cool i like how the side there are also 10 oil. cybermen sorry which i i love there are also 10 cybermen oh, okay yeah yeah right that I, I was always a bit air about this because they're yeah, yeah um the they Cybermen of the Tenth Doctor, do which they? are all they're all from the parallel world. Um but yeah. in these ones it's like, oh no, they're actually the Mondasian Cybermen in space. Yeah, which have but evolved. They don't into... look like Mondasian Cybermen. Mm. Yeah, yeah, it's a bit air. Yeah, that's the thing, like it's kinda weird because like they don't have the C, which is the classic. And yeah, I think you're right, exactly, Aiden. I think they were like, well, I guess we kind of already taken away those Lumix Cybermen. So how are we going to... We got all the Cybermen props. So what are we going to do? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I think it's like they probably should have designed a new Cyberman for this. But I, I but assume it was so the short. budget got yeah. in the way. Like, I like they're in it though. It's a really cool... You're right totally. though. It's a, it is a bit of an Infinity War. It is like little things here and there. And even Jack famously was supposed to be in it. But he was from a Miracle Day. Mm. So this episode was yeah. meant to be really big in that aspect and i mean this is even before infinity war obviously this is before we saw that stuff and the series infinity war copied this. awesome yeah it probably did fuck them russo bro no, infinity war shit. copied stolen earth and journey's end don't don't <laughs> yeah. get those two, <laughs> yeah, don't, don't connive don't. your way into this being yeah, russell, stolen earth, and, yeah, russell stolen earth the there'll never love. be another stolen earth and journey's end no yeah. totally never um <laughs> madame kavarian takes away by the way i don't like madame kavarian's character I've never liked the character. It all oh, this episode really. I don't tries like hard your character, to... huh? I don't like your character. Thank How about you. that? I love Madame. Uh, Madame. Wait, do you say Kaverian? No, 
Oh, I thought you meant Vastra. Never mind. No, I love Vastra. Like, Vastra and Jenny okay. and all that are awesome. Now, Madame Kavarian, like, just like... Aiden, Aiden, I have one for you. The protagonist of your short film. I don't like that character. Ooh. Oh. Oh. oh, no, poor, poor Nissa, who's named after a Doctor Who companion. It's relatable for the show. Ooh. I, thought it was that, that was some... I thought it was Nyasa. It's Nissa, baby. I thought it was Nyasa as I read it. No, all you I just thought think it was of nice, was, nice ass, huh? But when <laughs> when that was revealed, all I could think of was DC Comics and Nisar Al Ghul. Oh, is it, I see. Is it not, not the actual companion. It's a, his daughter. Interesting. As well as one of his two daughters. Talia. Talia's the other one, right? Talia, yeah. Talia yeah. Al Ghul. There Talia you go. Al Ghul. Um, but yeah, no, I'm with you, Connor. I fucking hate Madame Kavarian. It's so forced. It's like, okay, this is who we've been seeing. It's like, I'm a baddie. And suddenly they've all got these plans. I'm a baddie. It really doesn't make sense if you think about it. Come Amy never gets explained. So they're like, they're like, oh, they picked you up just before America. And it's like, we're supposed to just like be like, okay, I guess that makes sense. Like, just happened. Just happened. Just, it's, just came look, and went. Like, <laughs> Doctor Who has a lot of ham. <laughs> but like, the amount of ham is too much. Yeah. For, for yeah, it's just like you know the eye patch, yeah. her being like this stuck up kind of I don't care about people. Like there's no, ca- it's just a like it's just like a cardboard cutout of what a villain should be. She she's like a she's like a Bond villain in space. Is is what she is like a, a very much like a blow. You know they've done that. If you, there's Moonraker. Yeah yeah yeah. But but um who? But she's she's kind of like Blofeld. You know um oh. yeah I, I feel. I, I do like the message and the question, which is awesome. So the, the question is, where is my wife? I like how Rory's really getting yeah. his own here. He's like actually standing on his own two feet. He's been sent to take on a whole Cyber Legion. I, I think Dan made a comment. He's like, well, he has battled a Cyberman before. Very briefly, he stabbed the mm-hmm. Cyberman in the Pandora yeah. Open. I was like, all right, chill out, mate. Like, this is a full Cyber Legion. But like, it's cool yeah, that he actually... billions of Cybermen. Yeah, literally. <laughs> I'm glad he stood on his own two feet, though. Um, this is this is another awesome, instance though. of the doctor committing genocide just yeah, that, blatantly. Like, mm. I said to Dan, I was like, I was literally like, isn't it crazy how like people make the doctor out to be this like great soul, and he literally just blows up like a dozen. But, but that's the theme of this episode. The point. That's the legit theme of this episode. Mm. Like, it is, and I think I think Cybermen. It, it's it's always one of those ones where he don't really, he doesn't really give a fuck. Like whenever the Cybermen, he's like, I'll blow them the fuck up. Like just because. They're soulless. They're, they're just... They're not human. They don't have emotions. They yeah. don't feel anything. They're soulless like, boys. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Soulless boys. Yeah. Um, Victoria London. Good to meet uh, Jenny and uh, Vasha for the first time. I love these characters. Woo! I never think they're oh. utilized insanely well, but I think their characters are really cool. Um, the TARDIS the has arrived in... Yeah, I guess. <laughs> you can keep thinking that, but I don't. I'll see if I agree when we get there. But um, it's awesome. The TARDIS is in the, uh, and I like how later on the episode you actually get to hear. Because when I first saw this, I was like, "Oh, is this the Silurian from um, Chibnall's two-parter from last season?" But it's not. But I like that because I do like how later on, when the Doctor is getting vengeance in his head, she says, she tells a quote, which I need to remember, but I forgot it. But she tells a quote that the doctor told her. And she says, as I was about to go and murder a bunch of innocent uh, mm. minors yeah. for going after my ancestors, like, like unintentionally. And I think it's a really good message. And I like that. Um, the whole Strax thing's really cool. I like how it's like a really I, old war mixed with like future technology. I have one thing that I don't like from the outset of the episode go, on, yep. go ahead they they the before the opening titles like the the whole da, 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 the whole thing they have amy's monologue from the from season five it's exactly oh, the it. same i hate it the status quo has changed like i hate it in 20 if you what if you've watched 24 the story changes because this there's a story yeah. and the opening monologue changes in accordance with the story like just yeah it, we're not at baby amy anymore so you did know? you did you watch it on stan rewatch it on stan uh, i watched it on i watched it on I didn't watch it on stan i watched it on um amazon prime okay but well you've what, got to watch the blu-ray Zay, yeah so what Xavier's is referring to, to is what i have to deal with which is really shit for some reason in season six they do this like after the like the opening sequence before the trailer they get this and i'm sure if you're a fan of doctor who you'd know this but if you're not you suck 
but um, pretty much there's like this weird thing. Why are you what, why are you listening to this podcast if you're not a fan of Doctor Who? <laughs> I don't know because like to be fair, I feel like. Look, are you here for I, the other fifty percent? I agree with Aiden. Like you generally should be rewatching the show on Blu-ray because, but I'm just lazy and put it on stand. But like it gets this dumb intro. Where it's like when I was a little girl, and it gets this dumb recap where you don't care and you already know all the recap. But yeah, I get that. But um. Strax is a nurse, baby. I like that. I like Strax. He's kind of a shit character here and there, and the sometimes are never used again. I hope this season they're going to be used again as a villain, but fuck. This was it for Sontarans. That's them out. That's them out. Like, they're never going to mm. use as a, a villain again for a long time. Yeah. Do you like Strax? I, I thought. I, I like Strax a lot. I always have. He's funny. He's he is one funny. of my favorite jokes in Dan Doctor Stark Who. Dan is really good. He's really good. One of my favorite jokes in Doctor Who is, you know, you know this card. I laugh at it every time I of see course. the clip. I know exactly is, what uh, say. In deep breath, when he looks. Oh, is it deep breath? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think it's it. deep breath. Yeah. He is. looks up at, at Clara and he goes, The Times! That's deep breath. Shall I send it up? And she's like, Yeah. And he just fucking knocks her out with The Times. I love it. I don't know. <laughs> it's so dumb, but I love it. Um, what but, was no, I saying? My favorite Strax moment is uh, is when he's getting her coffee or tea or something in that episode. He's like, "Yes, I will bring her coffee. Then I will incinerate her." Yeah, <laughs> something yeah, like they, that. They I are also, funny. What he says, though, yeah, they are funny. Once again, like it's a dumb joke, but when he's underneath the carriage in the snowman oh, and he's getting the, the memory worm, with the memory worm, worm. oh, it's, it's hilarious. so funny. It's been snowing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, be- I believe I've been oh, run over. I believe I've been run over. Yeah, it's funny. <laughs> that is funny. To be fair. Um, what I was going to say before, though, is I think the whole Sontaran war, whatever whatever that war is you see when you first see Strax, I think that was, like, great. Like, it looked yeah, kind of... Yeah, I loved of, it. So cool. It, it looked surprisingly good, but also, like, it felt like Doctor Who, you know? Like, it didn't yeah. feel overly expensive, but it, yeah. it did the job, which I liked. No, I agree. I think it's awesome. I like... I love that. I would love to see a war like that. Like, I love the... Again, like the old timey clothes, like uh, I forget the mm. war. I think it's the French Revolution. That's kind of the mm. get up I was getting from there. Yeah, I didn't know well, that they did that in the... that in that one episode for Peters you... where they found yeah. the, the Queen's men on a planet in the middle yes. of nowhere. Yes, yes, yes. But uh, the, the, like, the the thing, I mean, like sometimes it doesn't work. But the BBC have 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 an amazing, amazing track record of being able to stretch their budget. Mm. Yeah, especially. Um, I, I think the futuristic stuff, the costumes always, maybe quite often can go towards the bit more of the naff side, um, but but I they think, have a, they have a backlog of like history department. Yeah, so all uh, the historical shows. stuff always looks amazing. Well, that's really good. Yeah, I love mm. that kind of stuff. The whole all the Dorian stuff as well. I love Dorian as a character. We briefly saw him in Pandora Opens. We even get to yeah, see I that kind of like yeah, you know, like we kind of get to see that kind of like Star Wars like. Uh, Cantina that we got to see again mm-hmm. briefly in Pandora Opens, um, yeah. and we I also Dorian. saw it at the end of uh, Journey's End. Uh, is that is that right? No, not Journey's End. Sorry, no, end it time. was it was end of time. End of time. It's actually is that, that. Is that the same one though? I don't is think it's really? the same one. Is it? It probably is. Now I think about it, but I don't think it's the same one. No, but but we get to see that Cantina kind of vibe. Yeah, yeah. But in the Doctor Who universe That'd is what I was, was getting at. One. Gotcha. Oh, then like they kind of like talk about the headless monks. So like, you know why they call it Demons Run? Because Demons Run when a good man goes to war. That whole thing is awesome. Um, and then we get to see Dorian getting picked up by the doctor. That felt contrived to me rewatching it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like that was like shooed in there because that's yeah. that was only mentioned in this episode. If someone had brought it up earlier, like yeah. the, the, just the phrase "Demons Run when a good man goes to war," mm. it would make more sense. It could yeah, be fine I, with just the... Sorry, Aiden. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it's one of those things where, you know, we, we have so many of those sayings get running in the show right now. It's like, silence yeah. will fall. The fucking cracks. Yeah. Uh, the first question, the question that will never be answered. Must never be answered. Uh, it's like, another one about Demons Run. That would be, be a lot to add to it. Unless it was something like, maybe when... River and the Doctor are exchanging notes in the diner. Maybe in the first episode. Maybe River could be like demons run yet and she could give him like a stern look there or something yeah. and that that would yeah. actually be cool but like like yeah she denies coming to this event because mm. of like she knows what because it she is knows what's yeah. going to eat. that's what i was going to say but also like, yeah. yeah yeah so this is the next thing that happens which is when he tries to recruit river so we'll move on yeah uh when rory when she looks at rory it's i'm 100 percent that river is post 
uh, Angels Take Manhattan River. It must be. Because she, I agree with you. Because it's she looks so at different. Rory like... Yes. Like... Yes. Dad? Yes. Hmm. I totally agree. And I don't... Look, I don't know... I've had this season for a long time. But I don't know if, like... Maybe the act... Maybe, like, Alex Kingston found out just reading the script she's going to be the child of Amy Moran. I don't know if she found out at the beginning of the season... But I agree. I got the impact that like now it's like they're really gonna act like River cares a lot about Amy and particularly Rory in this scene because mm. they know later on the episode they're gonna and that kind of always like took me out of the episode because I was just like now she really cares about Rory when before they kind of just mm. had like maybe one deeper meaningful chat in uh in Impossible Astronaut. But I, I yeah. agree and I never thought about that before though. So I think that's a good point. There could be the fact that it's after. Um, and you'll take Manhattan. That that does actually make sense. I love that scene a lot. To me, some wh- to me, it would make more sense because she would care so much more if, about her parents if she couldn't see them again. Yeah, mm. unless it just intersected just with her timeline. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Something I love a lot about that scene is that weird little that fairy tale s kind of like toy box sound. It's like down, 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 down. Yeah. Like it's just. And they this, mentioned this, the Great Phosphor. Which we get yeah. to see. Oh my god. I've never realized how funny that joke is. Like Stevie Wonder performed there. St- what, did he? Yeah. But you must never tell him. And I've never picked up on that before. I never got it. blind. Oh, now I get it. <laughs> Fuck. I do like that. I got when- that joke. I got that joke, but I, I cringed when I heard it. I love it. Because I've it never was, picked up it on is- it. I am... Um, uh, I do like that because in in Finn in Finn Ice from season ten, Bill asks the doctor because the doctor like tries a bit of food and he's like, "It's my favorite. Try this." And she's like, "What have you been here before?" And he says, "Yeah, a few times." So I like that. Mm. It's a nice little callback to um when he yeah. from there of River, which is really sweet. Mm. But yeah, um, yeah, yeah. All right, Aiden, can we talk about your uh, childhood crush for a second? Lorna Mark, Bucket. Was this Lorna Bucket? Oh, she's so cute. I loved Lorna Bucket. Yeah. Aiden still loves. Do, yeah. Aiden loves right. Lorna Bucket. Lorna, is Lorna Bucket the actress that plays the one that? That's Jack her Crow character. Name. Are we talking? That's a character name. She's like the. Uh, oh. In the military, she's the one that gives Amy the uh, the thing written in her ancient language that spells river. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I have a note for this. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Lorna Bucket. It is. Uh, it is. Lorna uh, Bucket. Random, shit. random. Random female. Random female soldier is hot. <laughs> We stand on a bucket here at fifty percent. <laughs> Literally, when that came on, Aiden, I was like, "Oh, Dan, it's a, uh, it's uh, Aiden's, uh, Aiden's crush." <laughs> Good old Lorna Bucket. She's also in um, she's in Line of Duty. Um, so I, I recognised her from that this time, which is good in. Um, she is also in an episode of Black Mirror in the Waldo moment. Um, didn't of course, never picked yeah. up on the fact that she's in that, but. There you go. Oh, can we talk about Murray Gold just being Murray Gold? Because there's a mm-hmm. lot of musical notes in the opening where they're gathering all the people and it's just like, yeah, so good. A few reprises as well in this time. There's a little bit of season one and two, the Doctor's theme in there. And there's also, I didn't pick up on it, but I was reading it before. Apparently there's a little bit of um, all the strange, strange creatures in here. I yeah, wow. There is. I, 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 I clocked that. I didn't wow. clock that. Yeah. There was? Apparently yeah. so. I mean, I was watching this episode on like a TV that was the size of a microwave, so nice one with awful surround sound. Well, not even surround sound, <laughs> just awful speakers in this like hotel. Yeah. So I didn't really pick up on that, but wow, that's really interesting. Um, mm. But yeah, okay. Lorna, Lorna Bucket posit- gives the thing to Amy, and it's got the uh, it's got the name on it. But yeah, go on, <laughs> and she so. doesn't look at it like oh because it's in her language, she can't read it yet. Yeah, yeah, I think because the TARDIS translates it. But to be fair, the TARDIS yeah, does no, land I still, and it just doesn't. But I also translate. still think, still think that she should have like because it's not, it doesn't, it wasn't translated yet. But like in the scene, she just grabs it and puts it to her to her chin. Yeah. She should have like flipped it over and observed it to make sure it was safe to give to her child, just like a mm. quick look, so that we know she couldn't understand it then instead of just going. Xavier's in that's there, also care. weird. Yeah, <laughs> it's I. I that whole scene as well, like, you know, I was watching this, I was just like, oh, you know, like, Amy reacts kind of, like, harshly towards her, and I don't necessarily, you know, she's just trying to be sweet, like, maybe I simp on a bucket, which is probably true, but, you know, I was like, she's trying to be but sweet, like, why look, is Amy being all look, shitty? It, 
let's put it let's put it a bit differently okay this is a bit extreme but let's say you were being held by the gestapo and you had a hot gestapo officer come up to you mm. would you be kind to them no i'd say no i'm a happily right? taken man <laughs> no but that you, you know what i mean <laughs> i do right in in amy's mind she's the enemy yeah but to be yeah. fair, what I don't get is that she only later on reveals, like, oh, I was I only joined to see the Doctor again. I don't know why she didn't just tell Amy, like, I only joined to see the Doctor again. You can forgive me. But, like, mm. after that, she's like, they're talking about him like he's famous and they all get, like, a DNM and stuff. And I'm like, for a second there, you're like, I'm going to shoot you. Next thing you know, they start having a DNM. I don't know. Writing wise, mm. eh, just, you know. But I like the whole headless monk scene. That's really cool where they, the Doctor sneaks in with his, um, with his on, on the cloak and stuff. I'm not a goblin. I'm not a trickster. I, trickster gets mentioned I again. I liked that. I like that. But the army stuff. I've never picked up on it before. Yeah, but it's the religious me. military from the, the, from time the, of the angels. Sorry, the religious military. Uh, Are they? they? They all look like it looks so cheap. There's like ten of them. Like it looks Wait. really cheap. The whole Wait. set. And you know sorry, what? Call me fucking crazy. Uh, but. I think that's that's a running thing through this episode. I think it looks really cheap. This episode, I so much of it is just shot in warehouses, warehouses and it just makes yeah, the production so. design look so boring. And that was a really big thing that stood out to me. Like, there's one point where, you know, when later on, jumping ahead a bit here, but when fucking Mark Geddes comes back uh, to fly Better the boy. planes, and they're, they're, it's all well, that's pretty much the, next to be fair, but yeah, yeah, yeah. When oh, Danny Boyd to the doctor, Danny Boyd to the doctor, and and Matt's like. All that it's fun performance, but it looked it just looks like he's on like a fucking cherry picker or he's on a bit of scaffolding or, or give him hell, like Danny that. boy. It just but the that, whole episode that also, looks naff. I hate that because like why? Why would you bring back the worst episode of the run so far? <laughs> hey, it's not that bad. I, I love I love how they introduced <laughs> All new characters expecting you to that, no wait like, that's that's the no. that's the the oh. egg. The egg is the moon episode before the the moon is an egg episode. That the the the, the fighter pilots that go into space with with propeller planes. Like what? I loved it. <laughs> I I th- what's so weird is this episode they they sort of bring back all these new characters. You know what I mean? Um, and then no, the two no. characters that they they actually do bring back that have existed in the show before are from two of the worst episodes of the run. Yeah, I, there's the Curse of the Black Spot that. pirates, That's and then so... the bloody plane pilots. That like, Curse what? of Black Spot thing everyone. is Fucking hilarious. Bring, it's one bring scene. Vincent Van Gogh with a paintbrush like charging out or some shit. Like at least the he's actor, a good character. The actor that plays the captain though is great. He just hams it up the whole time. He I is love good, him. Yeah. To be fair, though, like, um, I think what I think they were going for, Moffat, was like, look, you're on set, like, we've got you here, this episode's going to be big, and might as well just have you in it for a scene, and then it doesn't... Mm. Oh, no, Jenny, actually, Jenny... We couldn't Jenny, get John Borrowman. Well, they were supposed to. You know, Jenny has a quick line, I didn't know this before, it's like, Captain so-and-so and his crew have escorted off the so-and-so, and it's all off-screen. Um, mm. Sorry, can we quickly go back? This is the... So, you said this is the army from Time of Angels, you said? Yeah, yeah it's the religious military. Fuck. See, I didn't even remember that. Yeah, well, we're in the same, when, the same when they introduce the gay couple, they're like, we're in the where the where the, the where I'm thick and he's thin or something like I'm fat and he's thin. <laughs> yeah. We're the only two gay guys in the religious mili- in the Anglican military. That's right. why we're called fat and thin. Yeah, we're the which fat, is still thin, not gay good. Anglican like, <laughs> yeah. Marines or something. I love yeah. that. Very much. It's not good representation though. No, it's not. Um, it's just Moffat being silly. <laughs> Um, Moffat's yeah. a, Moffat's terrible at this point for that he's, kind of thing. You know what Moffat is? He's fucking naughty. <laughs> he's a but naughty also boy. like coming off coming off uh, 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 RTD, who's a gay man himself and lived mm. through the AIDS epidemic and all of that crap. As we know, because years it's and years, not years and years, uh, it's a sin was incredible. So good. Um, it's a sin. Years and years was also incredible. But he's so good with that kind of stuff because it's his. And then Moffat is just like, yeah, it's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Um, so what did you guys think? Like when, you know, everyone's popping up and it, it it's meant to feel like this big moment. There's an army of Silurians. Oh my God. It's like Should Pandora shot opens for all scene. over again. What, what did you guys think of that? Underwhelming. I, mm. what I underwhelming thought... I remember. I've got to I've got to think back to when I hadn't seen the episode because when I hadn't seen the episode it was like oh yes 
Yeah. Cool. He's getting it back. But now it's just like, okay, of course. Yeah, but you never see them again. You never see the Jadoon again. You never see the captain again. Like, the Silurans are kind of there. Like, it's all just like... Uh, Danny Boy shows yeah, up. Yeah, it was one off. shot with the Jadoon, and then we never see them yeah, again. You know, yeah, again. I forgot we they see, were there. I think I we see the Silurians. That's how bloody uh, again, useless they are. Because they get knocked out by the monks. Yeah. And I we see dead. Strax a bunch. I think they're dead. The Is Jadoon it? makes sense, though. Not like the Silurians don't, but the Jadoon makes it because they're, cause in their introduction, they're a military police force for hire. Yeah. So it makes sense that the Doctor would recruit them. Mm. That's the only people in this entire sh- extravaganza thing that makes sense. Yeah. I didn't like the whole Captain Runaway line. I thought it was like, it could have been a really cool speech, but it kind of seemed pretty lame to me. The Doctor would be like, Captain Runaway. Mm. Well, yeah. it was undercut by the, the main villain being there. Because if, if it was just him and Captain Runaway, they could have had some good Yeah, and there's, like, she, there's a cringy line where it. it's like, she's ca- uh, Magdalene's like, Give your order, Captain Runaway. And I'm like, Jesus, mm. could that not have been written better? Like, Pants. Christ. Pants. Yeah, I didn't, didn't like that. Didn't like that. So, on, on the topic... Well, we moved on a little bit, but the topic that I was talking about before of how this episode looks so cheap, like, mm-hmm. even... There's a couple of sets I don't mind. I'm like, I think the, the set where, where Melody is... But sorry, where um, Amy is. I think that was a nice set. But, like... The main control room set, there's a corridor behind it, and I sent a snapshot of this to Connor. There's a main corridor that leads to, and they go d- up and down these corridors a lot of the time in the episode. The corridor is literally the from uh, the Doctor's Wife, the TARDIS corridors, but they've just painted over all the yellow bits grey. And it is, it's literally that. Like, if you go and look at it now, Zave, you will never unsee it. It's just the TARDIS corridors, but grey. Um, and that that ruins the Doctor's wife for me. That's the, like the fact that they kept David's set for the Doctor's wife yeah. because they knew they were going to make it, and then they do something like this. Yeah, I know <sighs> it, it's freaking heckin' bizarre. Um, one scene uh, that I don't want to miss because quickly, I just came out from the toilet. Oh, just fucking I, I do cut like me off, hey? Sorry, I just <laughs> came out from the toilet. Um, I do like though how look, I, I kind of like how they utilize what they've already got because I did not know that until you sent me it. Now it sticks mm. like sticks out like a sore thumb, but I like the fact they <sighs> utilize something. I that think they I think had. I was just already mad because I was just watching this and being like, it's just warehouses. It's just warehouse. Where is the money going for this episode? It's just warehouses and warehouses. I thought you were going to say um, you really liked it. I thought I was going to really love it as well, but yeah, uh, so did I. I so it did was I. just. Okay, here's the thing. Um, the the episode, I don't think it particularly has a plot. Like, yeah, I know doesn't. the plot is... Oh, no, the doctor. no, no, no. The episode itself doesn't have a plot. The episode the episode is services the the last five minutes. That's it. It's there for just the last five yeah, minutes. Literally. And, and like, so, the this, rest of the episode they, is they, just they made like... This whole episode of, of, of faff to go... Mm. Ta-da! We, yeah. we know now who... Yeah, this Literally, person Literally, it, it just kind of lacks any sort of proper narrative. It's just like, oh, the Doctor's got to invade. And that's fucking what he does. And then and then it all goes wrong and people die. Like that, yeah. that's but, they, but they also talk about like him being like this god among beings and then falling from grace, which he doesn't do. Not like, really. It's just yeah. like he, he, he doesn't succeed... But he's not like it's not like you know Pandorica opens level of no, amazement. Yeah, uh, if or anything, even the, that's or even eleventh hour. Rises. Like eleventh hour was cooler than mm. the climax of this episode. I know it's so weird because like they, they even yeah. mention it. Like there's a side, snide comment by one of the soldiers. You know he he called back the whatever the race the, the I Atraxi, people are yeah. the, the Atraxi back just to give them a talking to, mm. and they're like yeah. Well, what is it like um like. Vastra's like my friend, you know, they rise higher. River's like the doctor will rise higher than ever before and then fall, fall so, so low. And it's like, what, he turned an army around with the mention of his name? It's like that always happens. And then like Yeah. Sure, they lose I, melody, but that's about it. I like elements of it. Um, but I think really what carries the only thing that really makes this episode work to an extent really for me is that it is full of a lot of good character moments. Mm. Um a big one, which we're pretty much up to in the summary, is when Rory... I was talking to someone about this today, or yesterday, and I, I couldn't believe how invested I was in it. Um, when Rory first sees Melody, um, and he walks in, and he cries because he's just so happy to see this kid. And it's yeah. such a oh, that's moment. a lovely moment. And then, yeah. and then yeah. Matt comes Arthur in. Darville. Yeah, Arthur Darville. Yeah, I agree. Great. Matt comes in, and it's like, 
you know, maybe a little bit of a joke. And then all of a sudden they're like, no, come on. You know, you're, you're part of us. You're part of yeah. this. Come, come see your fucking god Little did they know. Little did they know. <laughs> yeah, little did yeah, they know. Yeah. yeah. Awful idea. All right, father. What, what is it? Uh, son-in-law? Yeah. Come, yeah. On, come have a look at your wife, son-in-law. Crazy. <laughs> and I'm his... Son-in-law. Yeah, it's so so weird. <laughs> Father, I think stuff. mother needs a drink. Oh, and I like so I like the baby joke in this one. I think that's funny. I speak baby. Oh yeah, yeah. I speak baby. I it's hate that so, good. so much, but you guys can like it. I do like the <laughs> chat I, with. I, uh, I, I think it's adorable. The the like. No, it's not. It's cool. It's just like yeah. because his mother keeps telling him that bow ties aren't cool, so it's just full circle. Yeah, I think I just look. Maybe, mother, maybe I just got mother, horrible scars from uh, horrible scars from closing time with that joke. It's run into the ground. No, I know. But That's I hate that. I hate it in closing yeah, time. Yeah, that joke is so run into the ground. I think Robert was like, make a few jokes about this because I wrote about how he speaks baby. But what do you guys think about the? Um, the scene with Dorian and Vastra, I think it's really great when, like, they talk about the baby being, like... Look, by the way, only Mothra could write a whole storyline about Amy and Rory conceiving on the TARDIS and somehow <laughs> it... Come on, this is actually a storyline here. Like, about I was watching Rory this with one of my, one of my best console. mates who, like, doesn't watch Doctor Who. And I'm like, yes, just to clarify, this is a storyline about how two of the main characters conceived on the TARDIS... And the whole yeah. point about them being in the time vortex somehow made Rory's jism turn mm. Melody into no. half Time Lord. I, okay, let me just. Okay, so the way that that Moffat, Moffat canonified how Time Lords were made oh. was through exposure to the time vortex. Yes. So if you are born uh, and and conceived and then in the time vortex for a long period of time, when you're in the womb, like that, that seems to me like the most susceptible, susceptible time to become something. But then yeah. I, I, I have to rant about Chibnall because he broke it again. No, I, yes. I this picked is up canon. on this. Definitely did, yeah. This is canon. Like, this is canon. And he just went, nah, fuck that. Mm. There, there, there's like, a specific I love this line. idea. I love that idea because it, like the Time Lords weren't as omnipotent as they were. Then they discovered time travel and that changed their DNA. That makes so much sense because mm. it's been, it, was, it was revealed in Boomtown and all of that where they turned... Thingo into an egg, and then the whole bad wolf thing that exposure to the time vortex causes changes. So mm. it makes complete well, same sense. with the master. He stared into the to- he stared into the time vortex, which caused him to go crazy. Yeah, mm. yeah. They're, they're, that's that's a pre-established thing, mm. right? Yeah. So that is a bit a bit loosey goosey. But uh, yeah, you're right, absolutely right, Connor. That that scene where Vastra and Dorian are talking about, it, and then when the Doctor gets involved. Um, and it's, it's very frantic and it's actually a, there's another good scene I can't remember what it is but it's cross cutting between a couple of scenes at the time um, and whenever it cuts back to to the doctor and the stuff they're trying to figure out what the baby is I, I love that I thought that was brilliant and when the doctor's well like, it's cut oh, between on, it's cut between the headless monks night. and stuff and uh, you know Amy Amy running off and then like eventually the doctor <clears throat> uh, Dorian comes along and is like oh I know the headless monks we've had connections before and stuff and like that score of Murray the oh it's really. I good. think that's meant to be. Um, Zave, you'll probably know the the term for this. I think diegetic sound. Uh, I think that's meant to be like the monks are singing, singing it. Yeah, like as yeah, it is. It's their war chant. The death chant. It's, it is yeah. diegetic. Yeah, it's their war chant. Yeah, war it's chant. what uh, yeah. blue blue fat blue guy says. Dorian Mulder. Uh, Dorian. Dorian Mulder. Yeah. I love yeah. his line when he first gets taken after I'm talking blue, to the thing. He's like, I'm fat. I'm blue. I'm fat and I'm old. <laughs> Please no. There's also, um, I watched the prequel to this episode and I don't even remember it. It was just, all I remember is it was Dorian talking to monks. I don't really remember much beyond that. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do like how they, oh, oh, Lorna Bucket. They find Lorna Bucket. Uh, she's like, hi, Strax finds her. It's like, this boy was, uh, <laughs> very much a girl by the way and a very beautiful mm-hmm. one at that was like uh st- it was it was hiding in the dark it's like look they're coming and rory's like you look at your uniform you rebel scum mm-hmm. and it's like no listen the doctor's a warrior why do you think they call him that and then the lights go off and um i like how they hide amy and and uh I like, again rory is like full-on changes the character this man is like now fighting headless monks like Defending yeah. his wife, it's fighting not, with. It's not a change of character. Ever Are you since sure? Pandora opened, Are you like, sure about that? the doctor in the face, <laughs> he's been this go-getter kind of. I'm going to fuck people up. Kind I think of it's guy. character progression, is what well, it is. 
Well, okay. I'm getting fucking clowned on now, guys. All right, yeah. I, you know what I mean? Like, a change of progression, yes. But yeah, fair, yeah, like, no, no, no the, I get what you mean. Yeah. The look of the guy from, like, this is the man who's from 11th Hour who was, like, a huge simp. Now he's, like, defending his daughter and his mm-hmm. wife, which is, like, in my opinion, two of the, the greatest honors you can ever have as a man is to have a daughter and some kids. Sorry, yeah. a, a wife and some kids. So, like, Excuse the fact me, that he's... You've clearly never... Uh, been completing your Doctor Who Blu-ray collection. That's one of the greatest honors I've ever had. Um, okay, we, we're now we're back. Okay, we're back to Blu-rays. Oh the only Blu-rays I own, the only Blu-rays that I own, are the entire Twelve Monkeys collection. What was that? Because it's great, and I highly recommend it. And the entirety of Star Trek Enterprise, because it, I have a fondness to that, even though people say it's the bad one. Do you own DVDs? <laughs> I don't own Doctor Who DVDs, no. And I Th- do have... 36. Uh, oh, what is it? 17. You only I own have... 17 DVDs. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have a bunch. I have years and years, but that's DVD. Yeah. Uh, and then I have all of Star Wars and Battlestar Galactica. And I thought you'd have had... Um, Tenet on Blu-ray. Is it called It's About Time, what the fuck it's called? I, it, it's, it's called About Space, mm. About Time. I have that on... Um, I have that on... In, uh, iTunes. iTunes, mm. okay. I was going to... I was going to... Say, gonna, gonna, if we had more time, I was going to talk about that today, just briefly with you, Zay, but we'll, we'll leave it because we're, we're a bit pushed for Oh, yeah, because you watched it. But I have watched it now and I, I'll tell everyone, you should all watch it. You should, really should watch I, it. See? Today. See? I've been I'm not wrong. To. I haven't been yeah. avoiding it. I've been meaning Connor. to watch it. Connor. Margot Robbie before she was famous and Rachel McAdams. I think that's enough reason to watch the show. Yeah. <laughs> Rachel McAdams, fair enough. Yeah, and okay. fucking... General Hux. Yeah, Hux is in there. Yeah. <laughs> hey, look, I'll, I, he's, I've not he's been He's so good in it. it, though. Like, he, like he's been... He's, the roles he's been getting haven't been able mm. to show his acting capability because... Well, you think Peter Rabbit ripped. isn't showing his acting abilities? Are you tripping, bro? <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the one thing I'll say about it, and then we'll get back to Doctor Who, is um, it's, it's not, like, the top 10 uh, best-made movies I've ever seen, but... It's one. I I think it's in my top ten favorite movies. Like I wow. I genuinely really really enjoyed it. Like wow. it's like, um, it's better than this movie. But um, like I love Yesterday, the film Yesterday, just because the way it makes me feel. It, it's Same like, director and writer. Yeah, exactly. Um, and what and, Danny Boyle but, directs Yesterday. Uh, directs um not Yesterday. Directs this movie. You're talking about. No, no sorry. So, same writer. Uh, so I was um. Say, uh, yeah. Same yeah, writer, Richard yeah. Curtis kind Richard, of like directs Richard like Curtis every second of his dir- films kind of thing. Yeah, Richard Curtis thinking. directed About Time, which is why I said that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so he wrote... Right. Okay. But it, it gives you that... Like, I love a good love story that's maybe... A, not not like a just standard romance, though. I love a love story that, like, is more challenging than a standard romance. Something that in, encompasses a bit of fantasy or, or something, which, like, Yesterday did. And obviously, I love The Beatles, and it incorporated that, which is great. I mean, we all love The Beatles. That's such a fucking dumb sentence, but... Um, and then, and yeah, uh, about time does that, but with time travel, and it's just amazing. Yeah. Mm. But then you understand how when I told you about it, it's a love story halfway through, and then it becomes a family drama, and it shifts so well. Yeah, totally. And and it's, the way once you understand what the moral of the story is in those last few scenes, amazing, amazing. Yeah, and like it's not contrived as well. No, it's no. just. I love that last bit. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah, yeah I'm excited yeah. to watch it. I, it is, it is my favourite movie. Well, yeah, tied yeah, yeah. with Tenant. It is my favourite movie. I can't believe Tenant's up there, but fucking whatever. Tenant's um, amazing. It's just what if tachyons me. were real? Like, oh, you, obviously, you're not, you're, you didn't study physics, but tachyons are really cool. You and, just love uh, David Tennant. Connor, go on. No. <laughs> No, it's not. It's nothing to do with that. Zave thinks we're uh, talking about David Tennant's biopic. Time is called The Lighthouse. <laughs> That's my favorite movie. Written and directed by Robert Eggers. Yeah, boy. There you go. Now, my favorite is cool. uh, Whiplash. Written and directed by Damien That makes Chazelle. sense. Whip- yeah, Whiplash okay. is amazing. I can't deny that. And it's a great film. Mm-hmm. We're pretty much done anyway. I mean, like, uh, Strats gets killed, but suddenly he's back next time. Woo! But- for some reason, Lorna Bucket gets killed and she's not back, which is a shame because I simp Lorna Bucket. Um, <laughs> and then, also, he can make milk somehow? He does, yeah. He yeah can. Apparently, he can make milk. Yeah. He's got big tits. He has got big tits. He's got a rip, he's got he's, he's ripped and he can make milk. Um, big and titty then, straps. Uh, River shine, finally shows up, gives the doctor some dumb riddles. I don't like this scene. It's like, um, 
I am telling you who I am. It's like, oh my god, we... It's just wait, so childish. I wait, hate it. before we get to the reveal, can I just time in with something? Might be good for the week, uh, but I feel like it's so obvious that surely there's an explanation out there. But, so, they get out the cot. They get out the doctor's cot, right? And mm-hmm. this whole thing is like, oh, why'd you have a cot? And he's like, it's mine. Nah. And then it's got River's name on it. Uh, yeah, no I was I was about to say so so like so key he's not reading the thing he's reading the cot and yeah. how does yeah, he know who River sense. is from reading yeah, it the cot? Make sense. I thought that. I'm like, hang on a minute, because I was looking. I'm like, it's like it's Tars says something for translate. I'm like, hang on a minute. The doctor read it and said, this, this, and this. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I fucking KMS, bro. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Martha. Look, this is for the first. This is the first time in a while I've not necessarily liked River's character. Because she was like, I don't know, just like, she's barely in it. Like, I forgot I like how little she's in much. it. So did I. I I don't know. I totally forgot she wasn't in it much. But I like River's character. But for me, look, Aiden, I'm sure this maybe was planned. But for me, this felt really like shoehorned in. Like, even as a kid, I didn't like it much. Even as a kid, I was just like, that's the reveal. Like, yeah. Uh, no, I, I quite like this time. I quite like the, t- the twist. I just think it. We got to know River so much before this that I think it just became pretty obvious. No, um, maybe not so much the the that she was Amy's kid. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, we, we knew she wasn't a villain, right? So yeah, yeah. I, I don't so mind. Like, I don't mind well, the sort twist. Of. She does. She is. She has killed someone. So I was kind of like, as a kid, like who she killed that was important. I guess. Mm. I just love that it's. Regardless of how it was executed and stuff like that, I I just love that it just now Doctor Who has just become this timey wimey backwards and front family yeah. drama. Like yeah. I love it. I think it's just so not as good as Twelve Monkeys. It, such like a, a sad love story as well, and a sad family story. Considering you know they never really. I mean, I know he tried. He fucks it up in the next episode when he's like, "Oh, they did get. She did get to know them as they were growing up with oh, melody so or whatever." Melody, yeah. He fucks that up. I think it would be a better tragedy because Moffat's great at writing these tragic character it, things. It made a grandfather paradox. I think it would be great if, like, if they never got to see her grow up and all they got was these yeah. brief memories with her. I think that would have been excellent. And then, River, and then River has her own tragedy because she sees them randomly and they don't know who she is. Like, yeah, yeah. That yeah. makes like, that's like the, that's like the Donna thing. Like that's that's yeah. good writing. Mm. Yeah, I I, I yeah. think that like yeah, the naming the daughter after your daughter thing. As much as like that's fun, no and sense. it's a bootstrap paradox. It's no it's, it's yeah. The chicken or the egg? It's like who who had who came first? It's the chicken it's the, the bootstrap paradox. Like literally, <laughs> like Google it as 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 well would say. Mm. No, we didn't actually talk about how Melody is jizz and uh, man and I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. What were you going to say? Sorry, I missed that. Melody is jizz. Sorry, I, I really shouldn't say oh, the yeah. baby is jizz. I'm probably offending a lot of people who are a bit snowflake. Well, I mean, like, technically all babies at one point Well, exactly. Jizz. I mean, we all are jizz, if you really think about it. If you do think about it, yeah, true. Mm. Live and breathe and jizz, kind of, I think that, to be fair, I think as a kid, that <laughs> sent me more than, than the reveal of River. I was like, whoa, that's still happening? Like, Whoa, come. All the flesh doppelgangers, like... Yeah. I guess. Like. Yeah. Also, the fact that they only re- revealed the flesh do- doppelgangers in the uh, dop get the you know, oleaginous. Jeez. The uh, the fact that they only re- wow. revealed the flesh doppelgangers in the ep- in the episodes prior. It's prior. just like okay, so now this is the twist. Dan mm. was telling me on Twitter they did this thing called the Cum Trilogy, which is the it's like a fake box set that someone <laughs> photoshopped. I told you this. The... Well, Dan told me. I it, saw so... that. I did found you, it hilarious. Literally did you tell fucking Dan back this? the last few episodes, Connor, and I spoke about it. Bro, with with Dan and I? With you. With, okay. Bro, I was like drunk. I can't remember this shit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember the episodes we filmed with Daniel. Bro. News, everyone. Connor gets blackout before every recording of the podcast. I normally he doesn't don't. understand what's going on. I normally don't, but the episodes we do with Daniel, like we normally film in person. So I get, was it with Daniel mm. who said this? I feel like it was. No, Dan. no, it was last week. And last week we were sober as a fucking. Okay, I wasn't. I wasn't drunk drover. last week. Okay, okay, maybe that's weird because Daniel brought it up as well. So I was you just like, "Don't listen to me. You just don't like me." Uh, yes and yes. There you go. Ah! That's my answer. <laughs> ah! What are you gonna do? You better that's watch okay. yourself. 
I feel like this episode was never as good as I remembered. Like, that's kind of what sucked about it. I watched it and I was like, I don't know, I thought you guys would love it because like, I thought I was like missing my 4K TV and I'm like in Margaret River watching it on some microwave. And I'm this like, maybe, like maybe I just microwave. wasn't... It looked like Cut a microwave. It was tiny. This I was is like, one maybe of I'm the, just uh, not engaged. This is one of the rare... Because Moffat episode... Moffat who looks great all the time. Like it... it it's when they really went ham on production values, and it, well, it does it's when look great. it's when America finally paid attention. So of course they did. Exactly, and it, it, yeah. it's far more colourful than a lot of David stuff. It, it's really nice, but this episode is is the one exception where watch it on your fucking the smallest device possible because well, I did, if you watch so. it on a big screen like <laughs> I do, you just see fucking warehouse just going further and further back behind him. That's all it is. The whole episode just warehouses. I've just I've just had a thought. Go on. You know the technology that they use to make the Mandalorian? Mm. Once the BBC yes. gets a hold of that, Doctor Who will be incredible. Mm. That is really cool. Like they alien do that, worlds. That is really yeah, cool they crazy. do there. I think Doctor Who's... They uh, built two of them now because uh, cause Andor's shooting on one and Obi-Wan's shooting on the one that Mandalorian's shot on. Well, they can afford it. Yeah, I'm sure Doctor Who can afford it. Doctor Who's VFX, though, is pretty decent these days. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Oh, Honestly, so um, Doctor Who's green screens are better than most of Marvel's green screens. Coming quickly Marvel has oh, decent sorry, CGI, but their green screens are just horrendous. That's what I've realised in my Marvel rewatch. Can we just um, quickly talk about? Because Xavier, I want to hear your thoughts on this quickly before we go to any behind the scenes and stuff. Um, just really quickly, um, Chris Chibnall is he leaving? Because I feel like there might be an announcement this Sunday at uh, Comic Con. Is he leaving or is he staying? What do you think? He's and is Jody well, leaving? Well, well, typically, typically, uh, the the showrunners get six seasons and the yeah. doctors get three. Yeah. So it would make sense that this would be Jody's last season, and Chibnall will continue. Yeah. But with Joe, I think that there's a if if I was a good if if Chibnall was a good writer, I'd have a thing where the we reveal the next Doctor this season. And we have both Jody and this other Doctor crossover for a bit, because Joe Joe exists, so we can have that with Joe. Yeah, that's and then it. so like yeah. like even if even if the next Doctor isn't Joe because Joe's supposed to be a past Doctor, but we've seen Joe in this. So if if we flash back to Joe's times as the Doctor, mm. like we could have both of them interconnect for a bit, and then Joe be the main character. You know what I mean? Yeah, that no, would be like good writing. Lot. That would be really because that one of the one of I think it was Jay Xy that suggested in one of their uh, one of her things to that to have two doctors simultaneously like a split consciousness. Yeah, I've seen. Which maybe I think you is sent a me this a while idea. ago or something. But yeah. I've seen. I, um, I sent you that. Yeah, yeah, I've seen like a video essay saying like what they would do if they ran the season. And yeah, it was having yeah, that's, like that's rather Jay's, than companions, yeah. it was two doctors together. I'm all for yeah. Joe Martin having a season or two. Um... What upsets me is that, look, I generally like, look, you guys can say whatever you like, but not you guys, anyone who watches this and thinks that I don't like the idea of a female doctor. It's not true. If Joe Martin was a doctor, I'd be happy with it. I just generally think like with the absolute- it, It's the writing. Crap fest that Chibnall's made. Like, I don't know the BBC are happy with it. I reckon the BBC are just like, it'll be, it, it'll be easy if you go. I don't know. Well, it's That's good that me, it's but... it's good that it's not Hollywood because Hollywood tends to take big broad strokes from yeah. from small things. So like like uh, Catwoman and uh, what's the other Electra failed the two super female led superhero movies. So they were like from this point on we're not going to make female superhero movies, and then Wonder Woman proved them wrong because yeah. you don't take big statements from small things, right? Yeah. Mm. So it's it's good that it's a British show because the Brits are like, nah, it's that makes sense. It's, we're realist about yeah. this. Um, the, what, but wait, I do have one thing. Yeah. Who do you think the special guest is? I think it's Baron. We spoke about this. We don't. Yeah, know. You ha- you'll have to go back and listen to last week's episode, Zay. Yeah, I don't. No, know. No, hey, um, I'm sorry, my know. life is too busy to so, listen to every single one of your episodes. I'm listening to other podcasts. Like I have a life. Hey. Can't believe that you're not selling us very well, Zave. Um, to quickly sum up, so we don't I tread don't on the know, same hey. ground. Um, I think I said the most likely ones for me would be either Joe or Sasha because they're probably going to be back this season anyways. They're not anyways. really special guests though, are they? They're literally the cast. Yeah, but, but then... That's why I hate I, the I don't think it's going to be Special John. guest. Special it, guest. Like, I can I can basically like just 100% say it's not going to be John because if it was John, like, there's a big chance he's not in this season 
And if he is, because they've already shot it, there's no way that they'll make a big deal promoting him just after everything that's happened. Well, well, there was there was a fan that was on set and saw John on set, so it makes sense for him to be there. Yeah, but even then, like, thing, if, yeah. I I don't know if that I've not heard that, but even if um he he is like, there's no way that they would use him in the way to market the season. Not not this big of a thing, in my opinion. Um. But so then is it like, is it like, I don't know, who would come back? The, well, the thing is, uh, like, you know, there's also the chance that maybe it's Alex Kingston or something. But I think uh, if it's not Joe or Sasha, um, it's either like just a special guest that we don't know about. Um, special or guest. Or apparently there was this um, British comedian or something that was seen on set. Not John Bishop. Um, a British comedian that was seen acting on set. Um, it was like a big British comedian. I, I didn't know who he was. But What's remember so how funny? last year they made a big deal about like Sorry. Stephen Fry and um, and Lenny Henry. Uh, Lenny Henry being in the show. Um, I I reckon it's just going to be that special. What's so and funny Max, is like Lee when Max this episode also... comes out, it would have already aired because this comes out. Oh, on that's Monday. true. Uh, Guys, so uh, this get whoever whoever got the closest <laughs> connection. I think it's BS. I reckon they're going to do prove me wrong. Hopefully, but I reckon it's all special guests and it's gonna be non huge but hey who knows so if this if this comes out if this episode's coming out after the announcement then guys what did you think of that announcement how good was that trailer that was great can am I, I right can, Bro, I, just can I just throw a wrench can i just throw a wrench into the amazing can i just throw a wrench into the the, the suggestions so nice. i i i think it's john barrowman but in a perfect world which i know we don't live in it would be one of the previous doctors, the actual previous doctors. Tom Baker. Eh. Eh. In the flesh. I I can't be bothered with that at the moment. I don't know. I'm not in the mood until the 60th. I'm not in the mood for any any previous doctor shenanigans. Is that next year? A uh, year and a bit. It's 2023. Oh, shit. I thought it was 2022. Okay, fair enough. No. Fake fan. 1963 was when it all started, baby. Such a fake. Shall we move on to Australia's favorite segment? Let's do it. Woo! It's time for Go for the Week! Do you boys have any goofs? Other than no, other than the uh the the name on the cot being Rivers. Bro, the TV was so small I couldn't see a goof if I wanted to. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention for goofs, so that's fair. Yeah, I don't have any other uh, than the things I've said. Titus Wiki, though, had a few, but the only two noticeable ones. One is that a, um, a cyber leader, uh, its mouth at one point was blue, but it wasn't talking. Haha, <laughs> classic. Um, and another oh, one here... I didn't here, know that. Fuck. <laughs> another one here is that at the end of the episode, um, it says, The Jadoon and the Ood, created by Russell T. Davies. But... The you don't appear in this episode. This then kind of goes into a bit of a BTS fact. It's because there was a deleted scene with an ood in it. There you go. But they didn't... The goof is that they didn't take it out of the credits, basically. Um, sometimes it'd be like that. Uh, luckily, this time, guys, there's no comments on Karen Gillan's nail polish. That's apparently... Uh. That's usually the big critique that Titus Wiki likes to give the show. So we move on to Australia's second favourite segment. Let's do it. It's time for Behind the Scenes! <laughs> Surprisingly, nothing that crazy this week. Um, but uh, a few little nuts and bobs. And I remember seeing this on Doctor Who Confidential, actually, that it, they made this set in the fucking warehouse um, where River reveals her identity. They um, made it a pretty close set. I think it was a pretty small amount of crew. But even the crew that were on set... They were surprised to figure out River's identity. They all they all found it out as River performed on set. So that's pretty cool. Um, so the true. German title of this episode is Demons Run. Um, like you said, Connor, Barrowman was about to appear in this Miracle episode. Day, the controversial baby. man himself. But Miracle, they prevented that. Um, and then the last other big thing, best of a big fact is two years later, I think, there was a minisode made connecting to this episode called The Battle of Demons Run two days later. Um, and I'm pretty sure, I think I've seen it once. I'm pretty sure it's all about how they revived Strax and stuff. It's like a prequel to The Snowman. I was going to say, he's literally fucking dead. Do we want just Twitter things? Shall we do it? Shall we do it? Shall we do it? Let's do it. 
It's time for just Twitter. Oh, hold on. No, the new way I say it is, guys, it's time to bring in the clowns. It's time for just Twitter things. I think that's, that's behind the scenes, isn't it? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so... True. So, so, over on Twitter, I said, Demons run when a good man goes to war. Demon emojis. What are your thoughts on the epic season six mid-season finale? Write them below and we'll read them on the show. Dylan said, so, turns out Madame Kavorian is actually an awful person both on Doctor Who and in real life, which is, you know, not good. So fuck her. The episode, on the other hand, is fun. I love the uh, the opening scene where Rory says, would you like me to repeat the question? It still confuses me how they introduce Strax, Jenny and Vastra with very little context and we're all just supposed to pretend we've known them for years. The cliffhanger was crazy at the time, but a little dumb looking back at it. Seven out of ten exclamation mark. Thanks, Dylan. Um, Uh, I don't know. I can add to that Manica Varian thing. Um, She's... Look, I don't... I can only... Look, I, I can only read from the thing that I read. She has multiple controversies. The one that I read most recently is that she... Uh, kind of like sign a petition agreeing with J.K. Rowland about her transphobic comments. So there you Fucking go. Fucking hell. I was going to yeah. say, I don't know what, what this Madame Kavorian stuff is. She seems is, quite so transphobic, like... anti-gay, all that kind of bullshit. You so. know what she is then? You know, you know what we call them on the 50% show? A fucking idiot. That's what we call them. Whoa. Oh, Not, wait, hold on. That sounded like maybe I was talking about transphobic. No, uh, sorry. Uh, <laughs> tra- tra- we stand trans transphobic people. people. Everyone's welcome here. Trans, gay, <laughs> yeah, black, uh, white. Well, I, I, I Everyone's meant, welcome. I, I meant, I meant, fuck, fuck the the transphobic people. That's what I meant to say. The people that don't like trans. Okay, I'm just gonna drop that. You know what I meant. The now that's what I call comedy podcasts. Said, um, and, and so that's that's uh, that's. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Jacob Hines. I always want to say Richard Hines because we know someone called Richard Hines. Um, Dick Hines. All, all Jacob says is, I will never make art for Aiden fucking Connor over the TARDIS console and whoever make it shall be Legit. forced to watch Fear Her and then Love of Monsters, then 42 and the Battle of whatever the season <laughs> 11 finale, finale was, followed by Orphan 55 and those episodes on repeat for eternity. <laughs> However, I, I enjoy this episode. See? See, I feel like this is a meme now which I'm very uncomfortable with. <laughs> And now I got this random... I'm sorry if you're a fan. I don't mean to be rude. But I feel like someone sent me something this week and it was a link and I was... I didn't open it. I'm generally too scared to open it. But. Thank you. Uh, so if you are that person that that has sent that fucking message to Connor and if it is a photo of me pegging Connor over the TARDIS Stop. console, please do send it to me over on Twitter because I'll look at it. Connor's a bit of a pussy. Uh, kidding, it's fine. Uh, All my accounts get compromised. But, but... Twitter, um, Twitter allows explicit content. There you go. Send us your fan art. Uh, if you want to add Zavin and make it a three-way, me, uh, uh, I'll be the Doctor, Connor will be Amy, and Zave will be Rory. I like it a lot. Let's so do no, it. No, 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 oh, yeah, me, Rory, being cucked by... You guys. Okay, what else? <laughs> Just a three-way um, pegging. No one knows what I look like, though. I don't think I've been... My, my image has been You've telegraphed anywhere. Instagram. We'll make it work. Whatever you think Zave looks like, just from hearing his voice. God, no, please. <laughs> Look, I want to appear on, on For a Laugh. I've been wanting to appear on For a Laugh forever. Sorry. When that happens, then feel free to use my image. Sorry, folks. <laughs> no, don't feel free to... Just be kind, please. <laughs> be kind. <laughs> All right. What am I doing? Um, Connor, you didn't, yeah, you didn't put out a uh, call out for reviews this week, did you? I did. I got one review, so I'm going to read it now. Fuck's sake, it was so over time. My bad. Lovely. Um, I'll quickly read it. Someone who actually sent a legit message this week. Now nah, it's me. I shouldn't say that. Um, <laughs> uh, good man goes to war reviews from Jacob Hind. Uh, God, this really is good. To begin with, the Rory and the Cyberman is class, and this episode just continues to improve. The the reveal that River is aiming Rory's story is great, and Strax's Strax episode is. Str- sorry, Strax is in this episode. That makes it a great episode. This seems like an unpopular opinion, but I think Strax is the best thing to come out of the Sontarans. I know people complain that he's goofy and it doesn't seem to... Sorry, and that doesn't make the villain scary, but they never have been scary. They are small potato people. I don't see how they are meant to be taken seriously, even in Classic Q. Anyways, this episode is great. 
8.75 out of 10. Time for Australia's fourth favorite segment of the week. Since you are roughly halfway through this season, what has been the best episode so far, the worst, and the one that surprised you most, whether it, uh, whether that be enjoying it more this time or not being as good to remember? Well, this definitely takes the not enjoying it as much to remember vote. Yeah, same. Goes to war. Uh, same. Worst episode has been Curse of Black Spot, and the best has been The Doctor's Wife. I'd agree. Yeah, that sounds, sounds uh, about right. Yeah, I'd agree. Well, that was quick. Perfect. Save. Do, yeah, you, have any, I, um, I, do you have any? any uh, can you relate? <laughs> uh, well, I hundred percent think Doctor's Wife is the best episode. That makes complete sense to me. Mm-hmm. Doctor's Wife is is just like one of the greatest writers of all time. Neil Gaiman giving like a send off to the show that he loves that he never got a chance to work on. Amazing. Uh, and then for worst, I I never enjoyed Rebel Flesh and Almost People. Yeah, it's no good. So it's all right. So that. Like I, 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 Black Spot was fun as a kind of like period piece, despite the ending being a bit naff. So, I, I'm gonna go with Rebel for Flesh and Almost People as my. Uh, also, the continuity with the screwdrivers is hilarious in that episode. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've, I've heard yeah, about that actually. I read that last week. Yeah, that's fun. So, so yeah, that'll be my worst uh, for the season, and my best is of course Doctor's Wife. Lovely. You can't go wrong. Can't go wrong with that combination. Um, All right, shall we go on to our scores for the episodes, boys? Did you wish really hard? I did. I wish that you would give me your scores. Ha, ha, ha. Wait, wait. So am I going first? Yeah, I guess goes first. Okay. Um, So, oh, you're not going to like this. I I didn't didn't enjoy it. I really didn't. So, I like... Mm. I was gonna say, you can't. I see. I never. I haven't thought of a rating yet, so it's a bit difficult. So mm. I'm pondering it now. Like, do I want to g- give it a pass or do I not? Mm. Like, there's some good moments, but does they make up for the the shittiness that ensues? Mm. Also, some good eye candy, but does that make up for the shittiness <laughs> that ensues? Uh. Uh. Shall we? Okay. Do you want to sit on it? We'll get Connor. We'll get yeah. Connor to do his, and I'll do mine. Yeah. And yeah. you can maybe get a gauge from that. Connor, what's your score, mate? Um, look, I'm gonna have to say, look, I'm gonna be a bit harsher and give it seven and a half. I didn't like it anywhere near as much as I thought I would, but it's still a fun episode. Um, a bit messy. You're right. Aiden has no plot, and the reveal just doesn't get me much. Here when I was younger, but yeah, that's me. Seven point five is still a decent score. Um, yeah, I really just, I found myself hooked for like five or ten minutes and then for ten minutes I would be like, oh, what the fuck is this? And then there'd be a couple of good scenes and I'd be like, this is really good, it's picking up, can't wait. And then it would just drop again. Um, I like some of the twists and turns it takes, but ultimately it's an episode kind of about nothing, kind of amounts to nothing. And it, it's just there literally to answer the questions that were being asked four years ago. Um, back in, well, three years ago, back in two thousand and eight um so uh yeah a couple of good character scenes some decent score work in there but ultimately and i've said this multiple times this episode the big letdown for me is it's trying so hard to be this big blockbuster big episode and the two things that let it down is you don't know the characters that get that are introduced Mm. that you're supposed to know and that it just doesn't look like like a blockbuster like you like, like it should look like you have so much uh, awesome stuff that we had in the first two episodes. God, even bloody every episode of the season has had better production design than what's in this episode. This episode is just ho- grey, blue corridors. The whole episode just looks like blue, boring. Some weird shots of the Doctor just running through corridors whilst River's like, a good man goes to war, does he? I don't know. We'll find out in Hitler land. I don't know. Um, I don't know what that was. But um, yeah, so for me, that was a big tangent. I'm going to give it a 6.5. Wow. Are that's, you serious? That's high. That's I really that bloody high. I'm thinking Are you even given Good Man Goes to War a 6.5? Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, my God. Oh, you, you guys are going to hate me. I'm going real low. Okay, what go for it. What is going on? <laughs> so, it's Ooh. good. 
but it's not good enough to like. It's literally fair. the only thing that this this episode does. Is it has good eye candy. It has one good Rory moment, and it reveals River Song's identity. Mm. That's the only things that happen, right? Everything else is nonplussed. So I'm going to give it pie. Is that three point one eight seven? Is that right? Is that right? Yeah, it's not correct, but it's three point. One, four, but yeah. Well, I'll give it... All right, I'm putting your note in as 3.14. Are you serious? There we go, lovely. Yeah, look, I really thought this episode was going to be a winner, you know? I I loved it as a kid, and I thought we were all going to enjoy it, because it's just like big fun... I know, right? It's just so fucking fan service, but it's just... It's not earned, and it and it's not fan service. Let me give you you my rationale. Let me give you my rationale. Yes, mum. One point for Rory being badass. Mm Mm-hmm. One point for Eye Candy and one point for Murray Gold because it's got to go in there and that's it. What about the point one four? The point one four is because it's... it's. it's <laughs> you, you really want me to make it up? It's Doctor Who, yeah. No, the point one four is for Strax being funny. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's the show for this week, everybody. Woo! Uh, so I know it's all a bit whack. This episode is coming out after the Comic-Con panel, but... Um, Hopefully, uh, you guys can wait out till next week and hear, hear what we, we think about the trailer that we just can saw, I, right, guys? Can I just say something Woo! quickly? Um, yeah, go on. I've never, to my recollection, I've never met Xavier in person, and I'm going to next Saturday, so that'll be pretty interesting, and I'm going to see yeah, you there buddy. as well, Aiden, so we're going to have to take a selfie together, and I'll put it on the older No, Instagram. no, no, we have met in person. We met at Aiden's 21st. Did we? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, that was pretty. And I was, I was, oh, wow, I okay. was, I was. I, I remember it because I was, I was very mean to you, and I didn't mean to be. I was being a very big asshole on that day. What did you say? I remember this. I, I was. You, did you? Did okay. If I remember correctly, Aiden, you tasked Connor with filming all of the the stuff that was going on, right? Yeah. And doing the photography. I that. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I made a snide comment, a, a series of snide comments, because everyone else was th- that was there was studying film production, and I didn't know you, so I was just being like, "What's going on?" Um, and I was I was quite mean in the, what I said, so I apologise for that. Uh, oh, nah, but of course, you don't remember it. Trauma. Nah, I spoke about it in therapy <laughs> a few times, but. <laughs> 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 I'm just joking. Sorry. Well, we're all we're all chill now. I know what your your deal is. I didn't know who you were then, so it was like uh, the blind leading the blind, you know. <laughs> so the, the Sorry. message here, kids, is Xavier judges people he doesn't know. There you go. <laughs> accurate. <laughs> so uh, next why week, is that accurate? <laughs> I'm, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, next week we will be talking about Let's Kill Hitler. Uh, my girlfriend Bruh. Nicole is going to be involved in it to some extent. Bruh. Um, she, the plan is for her to come on for the whole episode, but uh, pretty busy next week, so it's going to be difficult to schedule three people, three busy people's schedules. Yeah. Um, so we'll we'll see how we go in terms of getting her onto it properly, um, but it might have to be like a 10-minute recording just to see what she thought, but uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Xavier, thanks so much for joining Thank us. Thank you, Xavier. I always enjoy it. I, I like being the guest star. Um, I, yeah, I'll see you next season. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a preference for season seven? Uh, I I haven't looked at what's upcoming for seasons. Wait, season seven is when Clara's introduced, right? Yeah. Stay halfway. another season. Uh, so I don't. I don't like any of the. I mean. Mm, well, I'll see. I have to. I have to do a quant- quantitative quantitative analysis of my own preference versus entertainment versus shittiness for commentary purposes. So, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a trifecta. <laughs> okay. So, um, thank you, everyone, so much for listening. Um, and uh, yeah, follow us over on the socials over at Fifty Doctor. That's on Twitter at Instagram uh, on at Fifty Doctor on Twitter on Instagram. Send us your fucking fan art. Send us, send us it. We are keen. (laughs) We are begging for it. We want it so. You know what would be good fan art? It would be uh, Connor and and Aiden in 12's TARDIS next to twelve. That's what they both want. Naked. Give give the guys what they want. Just the three of us naked. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Oh no! I forgot about what your statement was earlier. No, no, no. And I even brought it up. Oh god. 
Uh, follow me over on Twitter over at Greeny underscore pro on Connor over on Twitter at Hannam Connor. Zave, do you put your Twitter out there or not? My Twitter exists if people want to follow it, but I, I'm terrified. of I, One of my first tweets is the fact that I'm terrified of Twitter because I'm dyslexic and dysgraphic, which doesn't really lead well to follow me. Follow me, Xavier. I, oh, I didn't. Haven't I followed you? No, you do. It's a joke. Okay, I was I was very concerned then. Do you want, do you want to put your Twitter out there, Zave? Yeah, I th- what, what is my Twitter? I think it's still Brick Commander X. That's what my I think that's right. Anyways, everything. it'll be on my tweet when I when I uh, uh, promote the episode, so you can go you can go find it on there. Thank you for listening. Whoa, Doctor Who's coming back soon. We got a trailer. Exciting, cool. Connor, do you want to do you want to lead us out in song? And Zave, do you want to do some form of music to help us sing the song? I know you like to harmonize or something when we do it. I'll I'll, I'll try to harmonize, but like, it's it's always rift. So how do you harmonize with something that's off the cuff? It's almost impossible. Oh, I used to do. Off the cuff on the muff. Um, <laughs> what was that? <laughs> that was just some off off the cuff stuff. Oh there, Zave. Jesus. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> what is this? An I improv a show? I said yeah. a What? I'm spinning tunes at Xavier's party. Xavier, you better not be yeah. like this. Isn't musically incorrect or some shit like that. <laughs> no, I would. I would never do that. Now I'm scared. I've made a set. Kinda. I've fucking started making. Oh, uh, well, you haven't shared it with. Oh well, God, this is going to be in the it's podcast. It's a secret. That's uh, why. Oh, you want to keep it a secret? Okay, I thought we were going to communicate about it because that was what we discussed in the phone call, but okay, I was drunk cool, on it's holiday. a secret. I don't remember that. Nah, I DJ do Panda's back. I remember we used to talk about your DJing stuff in the first season of the show. There was a segment where I bullied you for anymore. being a DJ. I'm the Amplitudes. We're the Amplitudes. It's not Panda anymore. Oh. Okay, so, so, so you're Sorry. going to keep it a secret? Yeah, it's a secret. What's it? Well, start playing okay. and you, you can react to it live. Okay, cool. Uh, what do you think of my suggestions? Do you like the songs that I've suggested? Uh, that's a secret. <laughs> oh, come on. Connor that's, desperately that's tries like to the remember least the songs could, that he was suggested least, while throwing The no, least you could give me. so not true. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I, no, but I'm seriously... Do I you, do too. Like, this is a, I don't okay, know the good. rest, That's good like enough. Them, yeah. I'll, they'll be cool. in there. Don't worry. Okay. No, it's not. It's not about whether or not they'll be in there. I was. I wanted your professional opinion as a DJ whether they were suited to it. That's what I was asking for. Um, it's a secret. Let's end the okay. show. Okay. <laughs> Connor, lead us out, baby. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> Let's do it. And a one, a and mess. a two, and it's getting a little little little. It's Aiden's and Connor's, and Connor's podcast. podcast. They're, They're doing Doctor Who reviews. Doctor Who reviews. Doctor Who reviews. Doctor Who reviews.